The coming years saw a decline in British horror, which proved pretty much irreversible. But there were some fascinating final flourishes. From the late 60s, a new generation of British directors avoided the Gothic clichés by stepping even further away from the modern world. Amongst these are a loose collection of films, which we might call folk horror. They shared a common obsession with the British landscape, its folklore and superstitions. Witchfinder General, directed by Michael Reeves, took us back to the witch hunts of 17th century East Anglia. It may have cast horror legend Vincent Price in the lead role, but this was new territory, dark and nihilistic. Lower away. Go to now. Keep us low. Without a doubt, the best known of this group of films is The Wicker Man. Set on idyllic summer isle, it pits the pagan islanders against the upstanding Christian hero, with its horrific conclusion played out in daylight. Oh God! Oh Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Christ! No, no, be a God! No, Christ! The Wicker Man may have become the cult film, and Witchfinder General may have grabbed most of the critical plaudits, but there's another film which I think deserves much wider appreciation. What makes it so special? Well, let's just say there aren't many films set in the reign of William and Mary in which the devil rebuilds his body by harvesting the skin of children. <laughs> The film is Blood on Satan's Claw, and its director, Piers Haggard, also drew inspiration from the countryside of the home counties. You know, sometimes on a project, everything clicks. Well, it clicked because here we have a beautiful valley. We have ploughing sequence, you know, the farmers, and it's a rural community. And uh, here in the bowl of the valley is the, the church. And we needed a church because it's, uh, it's got Satan in it, you know, so we needed, we needed a bit of... Uh, you need the opposite. You need the opposite, <laughs> and, um, and it's amazingly uh, as it was, really. This is the focal point of the film, really, what happens here. When the devil rises up and takes hold of an innocent rural community, it's here that they enact their rights. What kind of a horror film were you setting out to make? I didn't want to do something which was, which was um, larky and uh, uh, I wasn't really interested in Dracula, um, I, I, but I was interested in the dark things that people feel and the dark things that happen. And that was what I wanted to explore. And I think the other thing that appealed to me really was the setting, the, the, the rural setting the nooks and crannies of woodland, the edges of fields, the ploughing. The labour, the sense of the soil, was something that I tried to bring into the picture. So in the opening scene where, you know, the lonely ploughman and his girl across the valley, and uh, you gradually become where something's going to happen, but you don't know what it is. <laughs> And from the moment that you do see this 
eye in the earth. And, uh, it was important for, me for the rest of the film to have the camera often very low. So we dug an awful lot of holes, <laughs> put the camera in, just to give you the feeling that we were somehow in the earth and what it was might come out of the earth. There's a sort of little moment of, of uh, folk horror, I suppose, which is absolutely distinct. Do you think that was something to do with the times? Uh, this is very interesting, this. Um, I think that I, I did, was trying to make a folk horror film in a way, because we were all a bit interested in witchcraft. We were all a bit interested in free love. The rules of the cinema were changing and nudity became possible, indeed, altogether possibly over prevalent, because the lid had slightly been taken off. But things go well beyond the 60s fad for nudity when it comes to the film's most disturbing scene, a violent and protracted rape. They've all gone absolutely start raving bonkers and, and it is a, about a breakdown, complete breakdown of, of, of values. A very beautiful procession coming to the church chanting and the blossom turns into something very ugly and the beautiful vows are used, you know, as, um, as scourges and whips. If I look at the rape scene now, um, I think it's probably too strong. And it's interesting that I, I wasn't bothered at the time. I think you um, will find most directors, uh, if they get their teeth into a sequence which is going to be really powerful, they become completely seduced, and I was seduced by the sheer dramatic power.